yan. Ang uh, usual dyan sa audit of inventories. So, at least isa. Ayan na. Sigurado at least isa dyan. Sa 7 na yan. Okay? Kung 7 problems yan. Isa dyan, sigurado. Inventory. So, in some cases, umaabot ng up to 3 problems. Inventories. Okay? Kaya pag mag exam ka na sa auditing, ha? Make sure na balikan mo yung material on audit of inventories. Okay? So, para at least meron ka na kagad na warm up. Yan. Okay, so problem number one, yan ay classic problem in the audit of inventories. <clears throat> so pag sinabi kong classic, <clears throat> mga typical na structure na makikita mo sa exam. Okay, at yung isa problem one na ano yan, siguro mga more than okay, two times nang naibigay yan sa act one. So hindi man exactly the same, pero yung uh, structure niya similar. Okay, pero bago tayo mag okay, okay audit, alamin muna natin paano ba mag uh, bago tayo mag-compute niyan ng mga adjusted balances na 'yan. Okay? Kasi based nga doon sa mga last ex ano, recent examinations, ini-emphasize talaga nila yung procedures. Okay? So kasi baka mamaya marunong tayo mag-compute ng adjusted balance, di naman pala tayo marunong mag-audit. So talagang hina-highlight ngayon ng examiner diyan kung paano mag-audit. Kaya doon muna tayo sa theory portion. Okay? So, yung questions, 1 to 10. Okay? So, pointers yan in the audit of inventories. By the way, dahil ito yung ating first topic, naglagay ako dyan ng lecture notes, ha? Yung use of assertions in obtaining audit evidence. So, take note yung mga assertions na yan, yan ang subject matter of the audit. Okay, i-discuss nyo yan in detail in auditing theory. So, yung nature ng mga assertions na yan. Okay, then for each account, kasama sa lecture notes natin, yung sample internal control measures and sample audit program. So, nandyan yung objective, tapos yung procedures. Okay, yung discussion yan will incorporate in the problems. Okay? So again, ha, ang auditing problems, hindi siya purely computation. Ha? So pwedeng sa isang problem, limang questions, pwedeng lahat yung questions na yun, magkocompute ka. Pwedeng apat lang, tapos may isang theory. Okay, lahat yun, theory. Okay? So yung mga substantive procedures. Okay? <clears throat> ah, Doon muna tayo, ha? Some pointers in the audit of inventories. So, questions, 1 to 10 muna. Bago tayo mag-compute ng mga adjusted balances na yan. Okay, question number 1. When inventory is material okay, to the financial statements, the auditor shall obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence regarding existence so, ayan yung i-verify, ah. existence and condition of inventory. <clears throat> okay? How? Pa paano ma-verify na may inventory nga, nag-exist? So, paano natin ma-verify yung condition ng inventory? So, ang sagot dyan, letter C. By attendance at the physical inventory counting. Kasi pag nag-attend tayo sa physical count, physically, makikita natin yung inventory. So, yan yung best evidence na nag-e-exist yung inventory. And, of course, dahil nag-attend tayo sa physical count, makikita rin natin yung condition ng inventory. Unless, of course, attendance is impracticable. Okay? Also, performing audit procedures over the entity's final inventory records to determine whether they accurately reflect actual inventory count results. Kasi baka mamaya, okay, tama nga yung count, hindi naman yun ang naka-reflect sa records. So, we need to make sure na kung ano yung actual, okay, based on count, yun din dapat ang naka-record. At kung hindi tie up nga doon, dapat i-adjust yung records. Okay? So, number one, letter C. So, to verify yan, existence and condition of inventory. And by the way, ha, mandatory procedures yan. No? So, dapat dito, shall. Eh. Okay? 
So, shall obtain evidence. Yan. Regarding existence and condition by. Okay. So, required procedure siya. At sino ang nag-require ng A and B na yan? Lagyan natin ng note. <clears throat> A and B are okay, required okay, by a particular standard. So, anong standard yan? Okay. Hindi na tayo PA, hindi na tayo ano ah, PFRS, PAS, ah, na tayo ngayon, PSA yan. So, PSA 501. Yan ang nag-require dyan. So, Philippine Standard on Auditing number 501. Anong title niyan? Audit Evidence. Specific Considerations for Selected Items. At kasama sa selected items na yun, ito, Inventory. So, dyan natin makikita yung requirements kapag mag-audit ng inventory at kung paano ia-apply yung requirements na yan. Okay? So, yan ha. Yung binanggit natin sa number 1, yung procedures doon, mandatory. Requirement of PSA 501. Okay? So, kasama din dyan sa 501, yung requirements kapag mag-audit ng litigation and claims and segment information. Okay? <clears throat> so, kaya kaliba, paano ba i-audit ang inventories? Ano bang dapat mong gawin dyan? Yan. Dyan mo makikita yan. Nag-provide okay, ng guidance dyan sa PSA 501. Okay? <clears throat> Next. Number two. Yung attendance sa physical count na yan. Ano bang gagawin dyan? So, that's number two. Ang sagot dyan, delta. All of this. And what are those? Okay, letter A. Okay, so procedures. Okay, in the attendance at the physical inventory counting. Yan, letter A. Inspecting the inventory to a certain age. Ayan, ito nga yung purpose, kaya nag-attend. Okay, verify existence and condition. Evaluate its condition. And performing, take note ha, test counts lang ha. So by the way ha, dapat clear sa atin ito ha. Yung physical inventory counting, hindi trabaho ng auditor yan ha, ng external auditor. Ang gagawa ng procedures dyan, clients, personnel. Okay? So ang gagawin lang natin as external auditor, mag-observe lang tayo dyan. So we'll do test check yan, test counts. Pero ang gagawa talaga niyan, client. That's why, isa yan sa procedure na dapat coordinated with the client. So, sa planning stage ng audit, so pwede nang pag-usapan yan. Pwedeng mag-suggest ang auditor kung kailan gagawin yan. Pero ultimately, ang magde-decide on the timing, client. Okay? So, again ha, clients, personnel ang gagawa niyan. Okay? So, yung letter B, yan, dahil clients personal nga ang gagawa, may tinatawag na management's instructions. So, bago ka mag-attend sa physical count, make sure meron kang copy ng instructions na yon. I-review mo yung instructions. Then, pag nag-attend ka na sa count, i-observe mo kung nagko-comply dun sa management's instructions. Okay, and the performance of procedures for recording and controlling the results of the physical inventory count. Okay? Then, letter C. Minsan kasi, ang ganda ng nasa ano eh. Manual. Pero pag inobserve mo na, hindi pala sinusunod. Yun. Kaya dapat, i-check natin kung sinusunod ba yun. And then, obtaining audit evidence as to the reliability of management's count procedures. Okay? So, yan yung mga uh, procedures involved in the attendance at the physical count. Yan. So, number two, then, Now, yung letter A, B, and C na yan. Okay, anong klaseng procedures ba yan? So, yun nga yun yung next question. Okay, number three. So, yung A, B, and C. Anong klaseng procedures yan? So, by the way, lagyan mo ng note ha. There are three types of audit procedures according to the objective of doing the procedure. And what are the three types of audit procedures? Ito na yun. Risk assessment, test of controls, okay, substantive. 
Okay? So, yan yung three types of audit procedures. Okay? So, briefly, yung risk assessment, ang objective niyan, of course, assess the risk. At two levels yan, ha? At FS level, yung overall, and yung assertions level. Okay? So, yan. Minsan natanong sa theory yan. So, anong levels ina-assess yung risk? Yan. So, again, ito ang purpose niya na assess the risk. Yan. So, at FS level and assertions level. Ito namang test of controls, ano naman ang purpose niyan? Yan. Kaya tinawag na test of controls, test the controls. Okay? At anong itetest dyan? Whether controls are designed and operating effectively. So, design ba yan and operating effectively? O, tawag doon, test of controls. Okay, ito namang substantive, which is the focus of auditing problems. Nabanggit ko na kanina, anong purpose niyan? Okay, detect. Yan, detect material misstatements. Okay, kaya depende sa objective. Okay, ang audit procedure pwedeng maging risk assessment, pwedeng test of controls, Pwede rin substantive. Okay. Pero itong ginawa sa A, B, and C, gagawin yan after doing risk assessment. So, ibig sabihin, dahil tapos na yung risk assessment, okay, yung gagawin sa A, B, and C, ang sagot dyan, delta. Kasi tapos na yung risk assessment dyan eh. So, either test of controls na lang yan or substantive. Depending on the auditor's risk assessment, yun na, tapos na nga, di ba, yung risk assessment. So, depending on the auditor's risk assessment, planned approach, and the specific procedures carried out. Kaya kung yung procedures noted in number 2 ay designed para malaman kung designed and operating effectively yung controls, test of controls ang tawag dyan. Pero kung ang purpose ng ginawa sa number 2 ay para makadetect ng material misstatements, uh, ikaklasify natin yan as substantive. Okay? So, number 3, delta yan. Okay. <clears throat> now, di ba sabi kanina sa number 1, letter A, attendance at physical count is required unless impracticable. Yun ngayon yung next question. In which of the following cases is attendance at physical inventory counting impracticable? So, saan dyan? Okay, maja-justify yung hindi pag-attend. Kasi ibig sabihin yan, required mag-attend eh, sa physical count. So, anong pwedeng dahilan? Idahilan. Ay, hindi ako makaka-attend. Kasi impracticable yan. So, ang sagot dyan, letter A. Where inventory is held in a location that may pose threats to the safety of the auditor. Kung makokompromise ang safety, ah, valid reason yan for not attending the physical count. <clears throat> okay? Yung letter B, that's not a valid reason. So, lagyan mo ng note yung letter B. So, very clear dyan. Okay? Ang standards. Okay? The matter of the... Uh, the uh, very clear dyan yung PSA 501. The matter of difficulty, time or cost involved is, yan ha, not, is not in itself a valid basis for the auditor to omit an audit uh, procedure for which there is no alternative or to be satisfied with audit evidence that is less than persuasive. So, hindi pwedeng idahilan, okay, yung difficulty, time or cost in itself to omit that procedure. Okay? Pero kung safety na ang pag-uusapan, ah, valid reason yan. Okay? So, yun ngayon ang problem. E paano nga kung hindi naka-attend sa physical count? Kasi impracticable. So, ibig sabihin nun, <clears throat> pag hindi makaka-attend, hindi nagawa yung standard procedure sa pag-verify ng existence and condition of inventory. So, ang tanong, anong gagawin ng auditor in that case? Uh, yun ang tanong sa number 5. If attendance at physical inventory counting is, take note ha, impracticable. 
So, dahil nga makukompromise yung safety ng auditor. So, anong gagawin ng auditor? Okay, standard procedure yung pag-attend sa physical count. E, impracticable yun. So, ang gagawin ng auditor, letter A. Alternative na lang. So, hindi pwede yung standard. Ah, Doon tayo sa alternative. Okay, kasi meron namang ibang procedure eh, para ma-verify ang existence and condition. <clears throat> okay. Kailan gagawin yung letter B? Lagyan mo ng note yung B. So, the auditor will modify the opinion if letter A is not possible to do. So, kung hindi magagawa yung alternative o kaya hindi na satisfy doon sa alternative, so, it will result in modification of the opinion. At ano nga magiging opinion kung hindi possible yung A? Anong senaryo dyan? May dapat gagawing procedure hindi nagawa. Yan yung tinatawag na scope limitation. At kapag merong scope limitation, hindi nakakuha ng evidence. Yan, mga ebidensya. Yan. Okay? So, dahil hindi nakakuha ng evidence, anong pwedeng opinion dyan? Either qualified or disclaimer. Okay? So, yun ang normaling pinagpipilian eh. Kapag ka lack of evidence ang issue. Yan. Okay? Yung letter C naman, kailan gagawin ito? <clears throat> Nagyan mo ng note yung C. <clears throat> so, yung letter C, if the auditor is unable to attend physical inventory counting, hindi dahil sa impracticable, but due to what? Unforeseen circumstances. Okay? For example, yung uh, warehouse, nandun, uh, out of town. Okay? So, nakaschedule. Maglilipad doon. Okay? Sa, papunta doon sa area. Yung auditor. Eh, na-cancel ang flight. Buglang bumagyo. Uh, unforeseen circumstances yan. So, ang pwedeng gawin, make or observe some physical counts on an alternative date na lang. Okay? So, and perform audit procedures on intervening transactions. So, iba kasi yung case kapag impracticable. At talagang hindi makakapunta doon sa area. Uh, pagka ganun, alternative na lang. At kung hindi magagawa yun, modify the opinion. Kung dahil lang sa unforeseen circumstances, ang dahilan, uh, humanap na lang ng alternative date. Okay? So, pwede i-postpone muna. I-request sa client, i-postpone nyo muna. Hindi ako makapunta dyan. Yan. Okay? Of course, hindi pwede yung date. Hindi pwede yung do natin. Okay? <clears throat> so, five... Letter A. Oh, ito na ngayon ang question. Ano yung alternative na yan? So, paano natin masasabing, ay totoo nga, may inventory. Eh, hindi naman natin nakita yung inventory. So, that's the question in number 6. Okay? Ang alternative, kapag nga impracticable, ha, to attend. Okay? Letter A. Inspection of documentation of the subsequent sale of specific inventory items purchased, highlight mo to ha, <clears throat> before, so prior to, the physical inventory counting. So, tama nga naman. Kung naibenta yan, subsequently, ay evidence yan. Totoo nga, may inventory. Kasi anong ibibenta kung wala namang inventory? Pero make sure na yung nabenta na yon binili ha, binili siya before the physical count. <clears throat> Kasi kung binili yan after, hindi nag -e exist yan at the time of count. Kaya mali itong letter B. Kasi itong letter B, binili after eh. O hindi existing yan at the time of count. Kasi ang concern natin dyan, kung nag -e exist ba yung inventory. Okay? At the time of supposed to be physical count. So, hindi nakapunta dahil impracticable, i-check yung subsequent sale. Nabenta ba to subsequently? Ah, totoo nga, may inventory. Pero yung binili lang ha, before the physical count, not after. Okay? So, alternative procedure. Next, number 7. E paano kung yung inventory daw? Under the custody and control of a third party. 
Tapos ay material yun to the financial statements. So, paano din mabe-verify kung nag exist yan? So, paano mabe-verify yung condition yan? Okay? So, dahil third party ang may custody doon sa inventory, pwede yung letter A. Mag-confirm na lang. So, i-confirm na lang sa third party. Anyway, third party naman yan. Or, pwede rin yung letter B. So, pumunta doon sa area, tapos mag-inspect. Okay? O kaya, pagsamahin yung A and B. So, kaya sagot dyan, letter C. Pwedeng A only, pwedeng B only, or combination of A and B. <clears throat> Again ha, so pwedeng A lang ha, pwedeng A lang. Pwedeng B lang din, or combination ng A and B. So, to verify existence and condition of inventory held by a third party. Okay, so seven, letter C. <clears throat> Number eight. Which of the following, ha, ang question, is not, ha? Yan. Is not. Is not one of the independent auditor's objectives regarding audit of inventory. So, by the way, ha? Okay. In uh, developing audit objectives, the auditor will consider the assertions. Yun nga yung mga assertions na nandun sa page 1 ng inyong material. So, yan, nakasummary, nakasummary yung assertions. Ang ultimate assertion ng entity, FS presented fairly. Okay? So, tapos yun na yung specific assertions. Okay? Dun sa, okay, nandun sa inyong lecture notes. So, in developing the audit objectives, the auditor will consider those assertions. Kaya kung yung procedure na yan, i-verify niya yung assertion, kasama yan sa tinatawag na audit objectives. Okay? So, let's see. Objective ba yan? Yes or no? Okay. Letter A. Verifying that inventory counted is owned by the client. So, anong chinek dyan? Ownership. That is an audit objective. Related to what? Lagyan ng note? Rights. Okay. So, yung letter A. Ang i-verify dyan, yung rights. Yan. Ownership. Letter B. Verifying that the client has used proper inventory pricing. Pricing affects valuation. Another objective yan. In relation yan to valuation. Letter C. Ascertaining the physical quantities of inventory on hand. Okay, so that's verifying what? Existence. So, kaya yung A, B, and C, those are audit objectives. Verifying these assertions. So, ang hindi kasama sa objectives, delta. Verifying that all inventory owned by the client is, so, doon nagkamali, on hand, not necessarily. Kasi pwede namang owned, but not on hand. So, dapat yan, palitan natin. <clears throat> so, dapat ang objective dyan, verifying that all inventory owned by the client is included, dapat, is included in inventory. And that is in relation to what? Completeness. So, pwedeng owned but not on hand. Hindi kailangan on hand. Okay? Kasi pwedeng located in other areas. But still owned by the company. So, again na dapat, is included. Not necessarily on hand. <clears throat> okay? So, it delta. Okay, next. Number nine. So, by the way, ha, ganito yung mga sample ha, na pwede structure ng question. Either bibigyan ka ng procedure, yan, katulad yan, ito, procedure ito. Tapos, ang itatanong sa atin, yung related assertion. Or, bibigyan ka ng tapos ang itatanong naman, what is the procedure? Pwede yung procedure, most likely, pwede least likely. So, ganyan yung mga tanong nandyan sa substantive procedures. 
Okay, so number nine, an auditor is most likely to inspect loan agreements under which an entity's inventories are, highlight mo na to, pledged. Ginamit na collateral ang inventory. As discussed in FAR, kapag ang inventory ay ginamit na collateral, anong requirement dyan? Dapat naka-disclose yan. So, required disclosure yan, yung financing arrangements. So, related yan to what assertion? Ang sagot dyan, letter C. Ang concern natin dyan, baka hindi na-disclose properly. So, presentation and disclosure. That's the related assertion. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Number 10. Okay, ito ulit. Binigay yung procedure. Tapos ang tinatanong, anong assertion yan? So, this one. An auditor selected items for test counts while observing a client's physical inventory. The auditor then traced the test counts to the client's inventory listing. So, anong binerify daw dyan na assertion? Actually, dalawa lang pagpipilian mo dyan. Okay? Itong existence and completeness. Okay. So, which one? Existence or completeness? Mm -hmm. Completeness or existence? Yan. Actually, dyan usually may nakoconfuse eh. Okay, so marami na ko confuse diyan sa existence completeness na yan. So para hindi ka ma-confuse, ganito ang ano, technique. You need to check the direction of the procedure. That's our guide. So anong ginawa ng auditor sa itong situation diyan? Ito yung list of inventory, yan yung client's physical inventory listing yan. Ito yung summary. Normally, kapag nag-conduct ng physical count, Paano malalaman pala na nabilang na siya? Nilalagyan ng tag. So, kaya pag natag, ibig sabihin nun, counted na. So, ito yung tag. Okay. So, kumuha yung auditor ng sample ng tags, ng test counts. Yan. At ang ginawa ng auditor, tinrace niya. So, paano yung direction? Okay, kumuha ng test count. Tinrace niya dun saan? List. So, tracing yung ginamit na procedure. So, Ang objective dyan, so dapat lahat ng nandito sa list may corresponding tags. At lahat ng tags na yan, dapat nandun sa list. So, anong gustong ma-verify ng auditor? Kung ito bang items na ito, represented by the tags or the test counts, ay naisama dun saan? List. Kasi pag hindi niya makita ito dun sa listahan, kulang yung listahan. So, clearly, ano gustong i-verify? Existence or completeness? Yan. Completeness yan. Kung ito ba ay naisama dun sa listahan. <clears throat> Kasi kung hindi naisama, kulang yung items. So, completeness yan. So, answer? <clears throat> Number 10, bravo. Okay? By the way, ha, yung question na yan, ha, given yan in the October 2019. Okay, exam. So, yun nga yung sinasabi kong mga sample ng mga questions. So, ganyan yung structure. Either bigyan ka ng procedure, anong assertion? Or assertion, anong okay, procedure? Okay. Paano siya magiging existence? Ah, pag dito nag-start yung direction. Kumuha ng sample dun sa listahan. Hinanap yung corresponding tags. Pag nandun sa listahan, walang tag, ah, ibig sabihin, those items are not existing. So, kaya ito naman ang gagawin. Kapag existence. So, ang tawag naman, vouching. Okay? So, yun yung tinatawag na vouching and tracing. The difference lies on the direction. So, ang tracing from source to records normally used to verify completeness. Itong vouching from records to source. Okay? So, used to verify existence. So, kaya dapat clear ha yung direction. Kasi pag hindi clear ang direction, maliligaw ka dyan. Yan. 
Okay, so kaya dapat marunong tingna at marunong kang tumingin yan sa direction. Okay? Kasi dito ha, ah, pag nagkamali kasi ng direction, ah, nagkamali ng uh, kay direction yan, magkakamali na yung procedure. So kaya dapat clear yung objective para clear yung direction. Pag hindi kasi clear yung objective, so hindi magiging clear yung direction. Okay? So para naman ma-identify yung objective yon, dapat ma-check kung ano yung naging direction. O, oh, yan ha. Some pointers yan ha. Some pointers in the audit of inventory. So, again, ang auditing problems, hindi siya purely computation. Pwede ka talagang matanong sa theory. And also, in auditing theory, kasama yung substantive procedures. And yun nga, in the last two or three exams, marami-rami yung questions on procedures. Okay, so talagang gusto kong malaman ng examiner kung marunong kang mag-audit. Okay, kasi baka mamaya na, naka-focus tayo from unadjusted to adjusted. Pero paano nakuha yung evidence? Anong kailangan procedure para makakuha ng evidence? Dapat clear din sa atin yun. Okay? Ah, sige, so hindi pwede yan na nasabihin. Ah, ito given sa problem. Yan. Okay? So siyempre pagdating ng nag-audit ka na later on, dapat... Okay, ma-apply mo yung mga procedures na yan. Okay, ito na. <clears throat> Ganito naman yung traditional kapag ka problems na. So, ang hahanapin dyan, adjusted balance. Yan. Okay, so notice, this is audit of inventory. Pero kasama sa yung audit natin, yung related transactions. Yan. Ito yung related transactions. And the related accounts. Kaya actually, ang inventory, part siya ng revenue receipt, part din siya ng expenditure disbursement cycle. Yan. At kung manufacturing company nga, part din siya ng production cycle. So maraming cycles involved eh, yung inventory. So revenue receipt, yan. expenditure disbursement. Okay, production cycle. Okay, so... Gagamit muna tayo ha, dahil first problem pa lang natin ito, audit approach muna. So, para ma-highlight, paano ba yung typical na audit approach? So, gagawa tayo ng T-accounts. So, prepare 5 T-accounts. One for each requirement. I-highlight natin yung adjusting entries. Kasi minsan, hindi ka tatanungin ng adjusted amounts. Tatanungin lang sa yung entry. So, entry to adjust. So, kaya dapat marunong din tayong gumawa ng adjusting entries. Okay. So, dapat siyempre marunong tayong mag-adjust. Yan. Okay. Ah. Gawa tayo ng T-account. Start from unadjusted. So, this one. Given na ito sa problema, yung unadjusted. Okay. So, these are the requirements. So, bawat requirement, gawa ka ng T-account. Start from unadjusted. So, lagay mo muna yung unadjusted. Okay. So, yung audit approach, from unadjusted, gawa ka ng adjusting entries, post to get the adjusted balance. <clears throat> Sige nga, gawin mo na yan. Okay, now, ito na yung background. So, you were engaged by the entity for the audit of its FS for the year ended, December 31, 2020. The company is engaged in wholesale business and makes all sales. Take note of this. We need this later. Ang markup, 25%. So, ang basis, cost. We need that later. So, given yung sales and purchases books, ito yung transactions a few days before year end. So, ito yung unadjusted balance. So, sales, this one, yung closing entry amount. Purchases, unadjusted. So, yan yung nandun sa ating T-accounts kanina. Also given, yan, inventory, accounts receivable, accounts payable. 
and adjusted balances given. Okay, now, in relation to inventory, you observe, yan, yung required procedure. You observe the physical inventory of the goods in the warehouse. Ah. So, nandun nakalagay yung mga inventory. So, kailan ginawa yung physical count? December 31. And were satisfied that it was properly taken. So, ito daw, 600,000 na ito, ang basis niyan, physical count. Okay? In the client's warehouse. On December 31. Now, okay. So, yung mga problems sa audit, similar dun sa mga problems natin, okay, sa FAR. Pwedeng bigyan ka ng unadjusted, tapos, bibigay yung mga findings. Okay? Kaya lang, sa mga sa FAR na problems, normally naka-specify doon kung yung item ba ay included or excluded. Now, sa audit, in some cases, bibigyan ka lang ng findings. Hindi sasabihin kung na-include or na-exclude yung item. Okay? So kaya diyan papasok yung tinatawag na standard assumptions. So, i-summarize muna natin kapag silent ang problem. So, ang main assertion, rather, ang main assumption, okay, only those items physically present inside the warehouse were included. So, ibig sabihin, kapag silent ang problem, yung 600,000 na yan, yun lang nasa loob ng warehouse. Kaya kung nasa labas ng warehouse, hindi na-include yan. So, yun yung main assertion, uh, main assumption. Anong implication ng assumption na yan? So, lagyan natin ng note. Okay, again, ano yung standard assumption? Inside the warehouse, included. Outside the warehouse, excluded. Therefore, ang babantayan natin dyan, there are certain items that are normally excluded. Bakit na-exclude? Kasi wala sa warehouse, nasa labas, not inside the warehouse. E kung owned ng company yan, dapat yan included. <clears throat> so, not in the warehouse, excluded. E owned ng client, should be included. In this situation, what is the effect on inventory? Dapat in-include, na-exclude. Anong effect niyan sa inventory? Inventory is understated. Kulang yung naisama. And by the way, ha, pagkakalimutan ito, ha, ang purpose ng substantive procedures detect material misstatements. At yung sinasabing misstatements na yan, it can be under or overstatement. Ito, under, misstated ang inventory. Yun ang gusto nating madetect kapag gumagawa tayo ng substantive procedures. So, kaya ito yung mga babantayan. So, ano yan? Normaling items na yan. Na-exclude kasi wala sa warehouse. Pero own, dapat included. So, number one dyan, kapag in transit. Siyempre, in transit, na-exclude yan. Okay. Consider the transaction and the terms of shipment. Kung yan ay okay, purchase transaction, FOB shipping point, while in transit, owned na yan. Kaya dapat in-include yan. E in transit pa, na-exclude. Okay lang kung FOB destination, no problem. Kung sales naman yan, okay, at FOB destination, unsold pa yan. So kaya dapat in-include pa yan. E na, e in transit na, excluded na. Okay lang kung shipping point, kasi sold na. So, kung purchase, walang problem kung FOB destination. Kung sale naman, walang problem kung FOB shipping point. So, nandito yung issue. Should be included yan, but excluded. Kasi in transit. Okay, another item. Yung out on consignment. Kasi nandoon kay consignee yung items. Wala sa warehouse. Okay. So, what else? So, in general, wala sa warehouse. 
located in other places. So, kapag silent, ha? Ang assumption, na-exclude yan. Okay, again, inside included, outside excluded. Another problem. There are certain items that are normally included kasi nasa loob nga ng warehouse. Eh, hindi naman pala sa company yon Should be excluded. Ano naman ang effect niyan? So, the effect, inventory is what? Overstated. Okay, again, it can be over, it can be under. So, ito, over naman ang effect niya. Okay, and what are those items na dapat in-exclude eh, na sa warehouse na include? Okay, so common dyan, yung mga held on consignment. The entity is the consignee. Ayun, nasa company, kaya na-include. Now, general rule ha, general rule. Unshipped, unsold. Okay, so general rule, unshipped, unsold. Kaya kung nasa warehouse pa, okay yon, Tama yon included. Kasi ang assumption, unshipped, unsold. Kaya lang may mga exceptions dyan eh. Okay, katulad ng mga made to order. So once completed, considered sold. E eh, nandun pa sa warehouse. So still included. But already sold. So, kaya in general, ha, goods already sold. Yung nandun na lang sa warehouse for safekeeping purposes. So, kung for safekeeping purposes na lang yan, dapat in-exclude yan. E nandun pa, na-include. So, yan yung mga babantayan natin. Ha? Kasi nga, ang purpose natin, madetect yan. Yung mga misstatement na yan. It can be under or over. And by the way, of course, applicable lang yung assumptions kapag silent ang problem. Kasi minsan may problem. Sasabihin, in transit, in include. Ah, wag na. Huwag mo na papansinin yung assumption na yun. So, applicable only if the problem is silent. Okay? Ah, sige nga. <clears throat> so, using those assumptions, anong nangyari daw doon sa physical account? Balikan natin yung inform uh, information sa problem. Okay. Aside from the physical count, ano pang ginawa uh, attendance at the physical count? Ano pang ginawa ng auditor? So, nag-conduct din ng tinatawag na sales and purchases cut-off test. Ano naman ang purpose niyang cut-off test na yan? So, ito naman ang purpose niyan determine whether the transactions were recorded in the correct accounting period. Ang pwedeng ma-detect sa procedure na yan, yung 2020 transaction na record ng 21. O kaya naman, dapat 21 na record ng 2020. So, wrong cut-off. Yun ang pwedeng ma-detect dyan. Okay? And as part of the sales and purchases cut-off test, okay, chinek yung last documents used. At yung last receiving report daw na nagamit, ito, 10-63. Refer to purchases. Okay, refer to purchases. Okay, eto yun. Yung last daw na nagamit, RR 1063. And based on purchases books, yan din yung huling na record. Anong implication yan? Yung mga RR after that, hindi na na record. So, hang na record lang hanggang 63. Okay? Also, you noted, that no shipments, ah, wala pang shipments. So, no shipments had been made on any sales invoices whose number is larger than 968. Refer to sales. Meron bang nakarecord dyan na ang SI number ay higher than 968? Yes, ito. Three items. Okay. Unshipped. Unsold pa yan. Pero ano nangyari? Ayun, very clear. Na i-record as what? Sales. So, adjusting entry number one. <clears throat> okay. Unshipped, unsold, erroneously recorded as sales. So, get the total. So, first, adjusting entry. Debit. Sales. Cancel natin yung sales. 
total, 130,000. Credit accounts, receivable. Erroneously, na i-record as sales. Wala pang shipment. Okay, after each entry, okay, post to the T account. So, post to the affected T accounts. Okay, now, dahil nasa warehouse pa, okay, yung inventory, wala pang shipment, no problem on inventory. So, properly included siya sa inventory. Okay, next. You also obtain the following additional information. Yeah. So letter A. Included in the warehouse physical inventory at December 31 were goods which had been purchased and yun na receive na RR number 1060. Okay, but for which the invoice was not received until the following year. So itong letter A. Purchase transaction yan. Na-receive na daw yung goods na isama na sa account. So, no problem on inventory. Included siya properly. Pero na-late yung invoice. So, may possible problem dyan sa pag-record ng purchases. Sorry. Refer to purchases. RR 1060. Recorded? So, tingnan mo yung mga na-record. After 59, ano na yung next number ng RR? 61. So, yan ang advantage kapag ang documents sequentially numbered. You can easily account for the completeness. Clearly, hindi na record yung 1060. Okay? Kasi after 59, ayun, no? 61 na. So, hindi na record yung 60. Okay, so unrecorded purchases. So adjusting entry. Okay, debit. So erase muna natin ang ating board. Yan. So debit purchases eighteen thousand. Credit accounts payable. Again, walang problema ha yung inventory included properly. Hindi lang na record yung purchases. So post to the T accounts. So post to the affected T accounts. Okay, next. So notice na, actually yung binigay yat yung binigay sa atin sa problem, tapos nang mag audit yung auditor. Ano tawag sa mga ito audit? Findings. Pero siyempre, paano nakuha yung mga findings na yan? Yun nga, by doing audit procedures. Nag-observe ng physical count, nag-review ng purchases and sales cut off. Yan. Okay, kaya lang, paano dinocument okay, yung findings? Yan, narrative. Okay, so kaya actually, okay, dito may advantage kapag meron ka ng audit experience. Kasi pagka meron kang audit experience, habang binabasa mo yung problem, napipicture mo eh kung ano yung situation. Okay? So actually, ha, sa US, bago ka mag-exam, meron silang requirement eh na experience. So dito kasi sa atin, pagka graduate mo, kahit wala pang experience, pwede na mag-exam. So sa atin, parang ang pattern, exam muna, saka na yung experience. Okay? So sa US, ano muna eh? Experience muna, bago ka mag-exam. Okay? So, kaya sa kanila, yung mga exam nila, designed yon na itetest kung meron kang knowledge na ng actual practice. Okay? So, yun nga yung actual yung ginagawa ng mga examiners. May mga questions na talaga pang practice. E ang problema, hindi pa naman required ngayon eh, yung experience. So, yun actual yung parang proposal before eh. Okay? Na kailangan may experience mo na bago mag-exam. Pero nawala eh. Hindi natuloy yung ano na yun. Nawala na yung proposal na yun. Okay? So, kaya ganito, di ba? So, kaya ganito ang maganda dyan. Habang binabasa mo yung findings, mas maganda dyan kung nakikita mo yung situation. Pag nandun ka sa level na habang binabasa mo, parang may nakikita kang picture or video na nagpi-playback, yan. Ibig sabihin nun, no, naintindihan mo siya. Pero kung halimbawa, habang binabasa mo, 
Tinitry mang picture ka ng situation. Biglang nagdidilim ang kapaligiran. Nako, ibig sabihin niya, hindi mo naintindihan. Okay? Kaya siguro mas maganda ako yung exam in pictures, no? O kaya video na lang. Video tapos, okay? Saka mo i-analyze. So, kaya lang ngayon kasi yan. Narrative pa rin eh. So, narrative. So, katulad nito. Yan. Katulad yan. Yung letter B. Ano sabi dyan? On the evening of December 31, there were two trucks in the company siding. Iisipin mo ngayon yan. So, ano pang situation yung sinasabi dyan sa letter B? Ah, parang ganito yan. Yan. Oh, nang mangyari daw yung count, may dalawang truck sa gilid ng warehouse. Okay? So, nang ibig sabihin yan, kung may laman yung truck na yan, kung may laman yung truck, dahil nasa labas ng warehouse yan, hindi na isama yan sa physical count. So, yan yung example ng located in other places. Yan. Located siya in other places. Kaya babantayan natin yung laman yan. Kung tama bang na-exclude. Okay. Uh, yung truck number 1, 2, 3. Anong sabi dyan? Inunload daw yan. January 2. Of the following year. And received on RR number 1063. As noted earlier, tama ito. Na i-record properly yung RR na yan. So, na-receive na, na i-record properly. Kaya lang, ang problema, anong date na na-unload? January 2. Eh, anong date ba nag-physical count? December 31. Kaya on the date of count, nasa labas pa yan ng warehouse. Anong ibig sabihin? Hindi na isama yung laman ng truck na yan. So, excluded, but should be included. So, adjusting entry. Okay? Debit inventory. Hindi siya na isama eh. Refer to RR 1063. Nandun yung amount. So, debit, inventory, 64,000. Credit, P&L summary or cost of sales, 64,000. So, walang problem ha, yung purchases. Properly na record. So, kaya lang dahil na-unload January 2, hindi na isama yung inventory. So, hindi na isama sa inventory yung laman ng truck. Okay. Ano naman itong 143? Ah, yung 143 loaded and sealed December 31. So, nilagay na sa loob December 31. Pero umalis lang sa company premises January 2. Ibig sabihin, unshipped, unsold. Unshipped, unsold pa yan. Invoice number 968, refer to sales. Pakicheck nga yung sales. Na-record ba yung 968? No. Properly not recorded. So, wala tayong problem on sales. Tama yan. Properly not recorded. Ang problema, dahil silent ang problem, ang assumption, by the way, kapag silent ha, nangyari yung physical count after office hours. O, kung after office hours nangyari yung count, na ilabas na, na ilagay na sa truck bago pa nag-count. Ibig sabihin, at the time of count, wala na sa warehouse. Yung laman yan. Eh dahil nasa labas na, what happened? Excluded. Eh unsold pa yan. Should be included. So, adjusting entry, same. Okay, with truck 1, 2, 3. So, debit, inventory. Kaya lang itong 100,000 selling price yan. Kasi based on invoice yan. So, i-divide natin yan ng 1.25. So, ang markup, 25% based on cost. So, debit, inventory. 100,000 selling price. Divide by 1.25. Credit, P&L summary. Or, cost of sales. So, ang nangyari dyan sa mga laman ng trucks na yan, na exclude. Pero dapat, included. Walang problem yung sales, hindi na record. Walang problem sa purchases, properly na i-record. Post the entries. Okay, post the entries. Okay, so post muna natin yan.
Okay. Tignan na. So, after each entry, post mo kagad para di makalimutan. Okay, next. Ah, balik tayo sa problem. Okay, item letter C na tayo, no? Temporarily stranded at December 31 at the railroad siding where two delivery trucks en route to a customer. So, anong transaction ito? Sales. Kung na-stranded yan at December 31, ibig sabihin, in transit. So, in transit siya. Okay? Terms of shipment, ayun. FOB destination. So, transaction, sales, in transit, dahil na stranded. Okay, FOB destination. Sales invoice number, 966. Refer to sales. Na i-record ba yung 966? Yes. Erroneously. Kasi kung FOB destination yan, unsold pa yan while in transit. Ayun, very clear. Na i-record siya as sales. Erroneously. So, adjusting entry. Debit. Okay. Sales. Cancel natin. 150,000. Credit. Accounts. Receivable. Okay. Still in transit eh. FOB. Destination. At dahil in transit, na-exclude na yan sa inventory. E unsold pa, dapat included. So, another adjusting entry. Okay, debit inventory. So, 150,000, that's the selling price. Divide natin ng 1.25. So, 25% markup based on cost. Credit, P&L summary. Or cost of sales. So what happened to that item? Na i-record erroneously as sales. Na exclude erroneously from inventory. So kaya yung sales overstated. Tapos inventory understated. Post the entry. <coughs> okay. Next, letter D na tayo. En route to the client. Okay, on December 31. So, in transit. Yan, in transit siya. Was a truckload of goods. Received on RR number 1064. So, hindi na na-record yan. Ang huling na-record, 1063. Terms. FOB destination. At tama lang. Purchase transaction. In transit. FOB destination. Properly not recorded. Okay? And properly not included. So, letter D. Lagyan ng note. No adjusting entry. So, itong letter D ha. Lagyan ng note yan. No adjusting entry. Okay? So, properly not recorded. Properly not included. So, no adjustment needed. So, excluded properly. Properly not recorded. Now, post the entries. Get the adjusted balances. Okay, get the adjusted balances. <clears throat> Ayan na, ganyan yung typical audit approach. Unadjusted, prepare adjusting entries. Okay, then adjusted balances. Again, just sa problem na yan, pwedeng itanong lang entries. Pwedeng itanong lang yung procedures. Okay, pero syempre, usually, tinatanong dyan, adjusted amounts. So, check your postings, answers. Answers. 